Hi, I want to talk about three ways that academic researchers can share ideas. They don't necessarily do them all, but they can share ideas. Back in the 80s, when I was an undergrad and then a graduate student at Columbia and Stanford, I was trained in the standard academic way of sharing ideas, which is through journal papers, basically. Right? So you have an idea, you do some research, some scholarship, collect data, do your literature review, publish it in an academic journal. Yay, it's peer reviewed, it means something. Well, I quickly realized that that is a really deeply ineffective way to share ideas because your typical journal paper gets cited zero times or one time. Maybe it gets read by a few people. You get a long tail distribution where some journal papers do have high impact, but what does high impact mean? It means maybe a few hundred people read it maybe a few thousand. That's the kind of scope of impact you can have through academic journal publishing. And then people would do academic um, books, right? Published by an academic press. The typical result of that is a couple hundred people buy the book and a couple thousand university libraries buy the book. Many of those books are never read even by a single person. The third way traditionally that academics share their ideas is of course through teaching, right? You have a big class, maybe where big means 50, 100 people, and um, you, you lecture and it's live and, and that's fine. It has a big impact on the people who are there, but it has zero impact on broader society. So that's the, the traditional academic model and I got increasingly frustrated by it. Then in the 90s, when I was a postdoc in Britain, I realized there's this alternative model what you could call a mainstream media outreach model that is basically you do a trade book through a mainstream commercial publisher, nonfiction publisher, you, you get your book deal as an academic, you spend a year or two writing the book, um, the publisher spends another year polishing it, editing it, designing the cover, preparing the marketing, publishing it. So there's always a three to four year lag between the idea that you have and the book's release. So you can do that, and I've done mainstream book publishing. It's very rewarding, it's, it's fun, it, it has some impact. If you're lucky, if you're lucky, maybe 10,000, 20,000 people buy your book, and maybe 30% of them actually finish it, read it all the way through. The second uh, prong in that approach is uh, mainstream legacy entertainment and news media, like uh, doing interviews for BBC television or radio where you've got um, sort of national media that are used to doing um, high impact in terms of the numbers of people that they reach but where the content is quite short and choppy. You know, if, you, if you're a scientist and you're interviewed for a typical science documentary, they'll spend two or three hours filming you out of which they will take about 90 seconds to splice into the final one hour documentary or whatever. Likewise, you show up um, you know, for an interview in a TV station and you spend literally longer in makeup getting ready than you do being interviewed, particularly if it's live. So that's great, you can reach hundreds of thousands or millions of people, but the impact you have is paper thin. There's not a whole lot of content you can deliver. You can't make a sustained and nuanced argument and you can't really interact as an equal. You're basically a supplicant saying, please have me on your show. So that's very rewarding in some ways, but it doesn't really let you express the full range of your ideas. The third way of doing outreach is the modern way, digital social media, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Inter uh, Pinterest, Instagram, all of that stuff. And this combines the possibility of reaching vast audiences with, you know, for some of these media, the ability to dive pretty deep. Um, so you can learn a huge amount from a two hour podcast interview with someone or a one hour YouTube interview with them. And the reach is incredible. So I guess I got um, excited about this partly because I went on the Joe Rogan Experience show about six months ago. And I realized, okay, you can do a three hour interview with Joe Rogan and get literally a million views within a couple of, of months. 
compare that, maybe in my life I've sold about 50,000 books out of the four books I've done. So um, 20 times as much reach from one interview as from years spent writing books. And you can actually dive a little deeper into the um, content on social media than you can through mainstream media. In fact, you can even dive a little deeper than you can in an academic journal article. So this is why I'm excited about doing digital social media outreach of ideas and why I've invested a lot of time in doing podcast interviews and now launching this YouTube channel. The sad thing is most of my academic colleagues don't understand this new world, right? And they think, well, at best, if you eventually write a trade book after you get tenure and 2,000 people read it, that's a big deal. That to them is outreach. And I think the sad thing is a lot of my colleagues have great ideas and amazing research and they are just not communicating it to the general public or even to other people in their fields or other fields or policy wonks or politicians or anybody else who matters. So their knowledge is staying siloed within journal articles and live in-person teaching and trade books and national interviews that are too short to make a difference. So I hope more of my colleagues will actually join me in social media world with their own YouTube channels. Some of them are starting to do this. Most of them aren't. But I think if you join in this social media revolution, you can have vastly higher impact with your ideas. And that brings all sorts of benefits. For example, better graduate student applicants. You can attract better colleagues to hire. You can network with better collaborators for your research. You can get your ideas known out there. So even if you only care about your journal papers getting cited, you'll still get more citations. If you at least, at least do a two or three minute YouTube video explaining each paper and just release it and, and let people learn about it. So that's my rant about the three different ways of doing public outreach and why we should favor the, the new way a little bit more heavily.